Hey guys, it's Anessa and welcome back to yet another video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I'm having a wonderful day. So today I'm gonna to talk to you guys about the AD400. Um, a vendor sent me this light and I'm gonna let you know um, how I feel about it, what I like about it, what I don't like about it. And I'm gonna walk you guys through a photo shoot that I did with it. And you guys could decide if this light is for you or not. This is not a review. I don't do reviews. I'm just gonna give you my thoughts on what I like and don't like about it. So in terms of the light, the things I love about the light is the size and the weight of this light. Now, compared to my Godox 8600 light that I have, this light is extremely uh, smaller and lighter. So in terms of the light that I will pick up, you know, when I need to go to do outdoor shoots, especially if it's a, a long one, um, I will definitely be picking up this light to go outside and shoot. Now, this light is a little bit uh, less powerful than the AD600. This one is 400 watts. The AD600 is 600 watts. There's also a significant difference between the price point. So the AD600 is a little bit more and the AD400 is a little bit less. At the time of shooting this video, I'm fully aware that Westcott just came out with another light that competes with this one. And that light is extremely cheaper than this light. Now, if you're already invested in the Godox community, meaning you already have like other lights with Godox, this would fall into that unit that you already have very nicely because I already have the Godox 8600. I have the Godox 8200 lights, um, and this light will just fall right into uh, that lineup with no problems, because they all work nicely together. So that's um, another thing that I really, really love about this. Now, the thing I really don't like about this light, and is a little minor thing, I don't know about you guys, if you have this light, it's a very, very minor thing. Now, in order to mount your Bowen mount, your Bowen's mount um, modifiers on this light, you had to put on this little piece, right? So you have to put, you have to add this little piece to this light, the AD400 uh, light. <laughs> now, I really wish that they would have just give you this adapter that could just slip on and clip on to the light as opposed to screwing on. So they give you four screws and you could put the four screws um, two screws at the bottom and then two screws at the top. Now, I was only able to get the two screws in at the bottom and for whatever reason, I could not get the two screws to line up at the top. So basically, <laughs> I only have two screws to support this, this um, adapter. I'm hoping that holes and you know my modifiers don't fall over and, and break, um, but that's the only thing I really dislike about this i really wish that they would have just either just have the unit come with this on it or have it just be like a slip on where you could slip it on and the the piece that actually covers the light you can't even use that piece anymore let me get it so this piece that comes with the light that actually is supposed to you're supposed to put on the light to cover the, to protect the light you can't even use this piece anymore because now when you have this adapter on here, with the adapter on here, this becomes pointless. So I would say um, overall, this light is a great option to my kit. I don't know about you guys, but I really love the fact that I could use this. I, I really love the fact that it's more portable than my 8600. And that's the extent of what, what, what I'm going to say about this light. If you guys want to know about lighting ratios, lighting output, and all that good stuff, there's multiple videos out there that you can go and watch and it can tell you everything about that. That being said, let's jump into this photo shoot. Typically when you're using a modifier with some sort of artificial light, what you will want to do is basically fetter the light. Now the reason you would want to fetter the light is because in the center of the modifier is typically the brightest part of the light. So what manufacturers have done to help reduce the intensity of the light is put a inner baffle on the modifier. The inner baffle will help but it doesn't completely eliminate the brightness. Hence the reason you would typically fetter the light so it reduces that intensity 
and we only get the soft quality of the light. For this photo shoot, I completely eliminated that practice. In fact, I intensified the light even more by putting the Godox 8400 light in front of my softbox. On its own, if I use only the 8400 with the reflector, I get a very harsh light. If you use a softbox on its own, I would get very soft light. Combining these two light sources results in soft but specular highlights. Using only the 8400 with the reflector would not give a very flattering image. It would be like me going outside at 12 noon taking pictures. What I would get from that is very nasty shadows. So to help with that, all I did was put a diffuser between the subject and the sun. In this case, the sun being the 8400 and the diffuser being the softbox. So in addition to utilizing the Godox 8400 uh, light and utilizing the 8200 in that softbox, what I also used was two additional lights in this photo shoot. I had a strip box right to the my right which is camera left and it was directly behind me where this actual softbox is right now and that's in frame that's the softbox that was actually hitting the subjects and lighting up the subject's shoulder but the problem with that particular strip box and i didn't really want to use the strip box i wanted to use a reflector but i didn't have a reflector to utilize so i ended up using the strip box now the problem with the strip box was that at the lower part of the image it was lighting up the subject a little bit too much and i really didn't like that because it was drawing too much attention away from the subject's face so what i ended up doing was basically putting a flag between the subject and the light to help block that light at the lower portion of the frame and it just helped to reduce that light on the lower portion of the frame and help to focus the attention a little bit above and not to the lower part of the frame. So that was one part. Now the additional light that I also had was the background light. The background light was simply an 8200 light with a reflector hit in the background, just to light up the background. And that was it, just to add a little bit of separation between uh, the subject and the background. Then lastly, all I did was simply pose the subject in the way that I thought was flattering that would add a little bit of a mood and bring out some of the expression from the subject. And once I you know, had my lights dial in, I had to pose the way I wanted it, uh, we were able to capture the images that you're about to see. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. If you think it was helpful to you, please go ahead and give it a big thumbs up. If you like it, give it a big thumbs up. Put some comments down below. Let me know uh, what was your favorite image in this video. And guys, please share this video with your friends and family if you believe it will be helpful to them. And guys, if you got this far in this video and you haven't subscribed yet to the channel, well, I'm not forcing you to subscribe, but if you would like to subscribe, hit that subscribe button and also hit the bell notification so you get notified when I release videos. All right. Talk to you guys later. See you on the next video.